So it is time for solution five of our crime mystery game in Python. So we've, this is what we've created so far. We have a crime has taken place at Cruel Crime Labs. Do you accept the challenge? Yes. What is your name? Ruth. And then if, what we're going to build today is this part. We will give you some text saying like, hey, to solve the murder, you need to learn about the database. We will list all the tables in the database. And then we're going to um, explore the table. So we're going to ask the user to give us, tell us a table name, and then they will be able to explore it as much as they want. And when they are ready, they say no, and then we cut the game. Okay, so this is where we are at. If you want to follow these bytes a little bit in advance, or have an early preview as I build them, I have a YouTube membership that will allow you to see them as I create them. Otherwise, I will see you every week with a new byte. So now let's solve for byte six, five, five. This is five. So let's do it. So I give you the tier theory on byte five. So this is the solution part where we connect it to the table, the database, and then uh, we query the tables. So what we we're going to do is put everything together. So we're going to copy what we did up to byte which is this part, hello, um, what is your name, and all that stuff. Um, and then the only part that I've changed is this, let's get you initiated. We didn't have that before. And for the second part, what we need to do is create two functions, one for the database connection and another one for the uh, get data from tables. Okay, so I'm going to call the first, the, the thing the neat thing about functions and doing this in functions is that you're creating like chunks of um, code that do something very specific. So if at some point, which we're probably going to do, want to get back in here and say, hey, instead of giving just a table info, we want to have some graphs, we will be able to find that code in that function and work with it or give it to somebody else and say, hey, this is your byte, do whatever you want and then bring it back to me. You know what I mean? It makes everything a lot easier. That's why we're doing everything in like blocks. So this is going to be the block for um, the connection to the database. We're actually going to create modules too. I'll tell you what that is and it's going to make everything a lot easier. But for now, we're here. So not intro, we're going to have a function called get data, right? And then this get data is going to be the one that reads the database. So it's going to do this part, the connection part that we have up here. If you don't know what this is, go to byte five and check it out, okay? Uh, so paste it in there, make sure that indentation is correct, otherwise you will get into a lot of trouble. And then we're going to do the part where it reads all the tables. So we have this part. It's a little bit all over the place, but we will put it together. So we're going to do that part that reads all the table names. And then we're going to clean them a bit. We did that here, right? There. So make sure that the indentation is done properly, which is probably not at all. And then we need to make two global variables. We're going to do global the df. It shouldn't be called df, actually. It should be called, let me call it, because, you know, df is such a generic name that we don't want to use it here. So I'm going to call that df table. Something else, whatever you want. But just because I've used it in my tests, let's keep it so like that. And then we need another for the connection to the database because that is going to be reduced for other functions too, okay? So this is time that we start doing a little bit of documentation. This is getting bigger. So this is going to read the SQL database and create a list of tables. In case somebody else comes after us and say, what the heck does this do? <laughs> you know, the next one is going to be, they're going to call it, be careful with the intentions, uh, get 
I call it X info because X is a table name, so you can call it something else. And this is going to be um, this part. But we are going to, I copy it like this, I'm going to give it another name. So we are going to call this, for some reason I call it result, I'm not sure why, <laughs> result equal to. But here, if you think about it, you do not want, um, you do not want the table to be fit manually. You want to obviously have a variable that feeds the table. So we're going to call this table name. And then this is going to be table name. So when somebody calls that function with that table name, it will get returned. Check my functions byte if you're unsure of what I'm doing. I've already explained this part. So this is all we need for that table name. And now we can actually start testing this. It's quite good to test in bytes <laughs> so you know that everything is working. So we're going to start with the intro, execute it. We're going to execute the username. And then we're going to print the following. I'm going to copy it because there's no point in you watching me doing that. So print. We're going to print a bunch of text. So to be able to solve the murder, blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to print also this part of the text. Let's explore those tables moving forward. And now to see that everything is working, we're going to go and test this. We're going to do get data to execute the database connection. And then I'm going to do get x info, just print it, just to see that it's doing what I want it to do. And then this is going to be person, for example. So shift enter, and let's see what it does. So yes, <laughs> we've done this a few times. Huh? Mm -mm. It did not execute the table person because why? Oh, we'll have to print it, obviously. Uh, result, print result. And we get the table. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's start writing the if statement. Uh, we're going to go, and first we need to ask the question. Be careful with the indentation, indentation, indentation. <laughs> so this is going to print the question. I'm going to show you how to loop that on byte six, so you don't have to write it by hand. And we will learn how to loop, so quite neat. Um, then we're going to do an if statement. We've done that before. So it says if string inspect table. And then we're going to do not equal like a mathematical equal. We're going to do is comparable to, if you would say so, one. So that's going to be a string, not a number. And then we're going to do um, what we're going to do. We're going to print. Let me copy that part. Here you have the crime scene report table, and then we're going to execute the database connection, get data, and then we're going to get x info, it's called, right? And then the first one is going to be our crime scene, crime scene report because we wrote here type one for a crime scene report, scene report, right? Okay, we got it. So enter, and then 
we're going to once we show that so this will this will actually show them the table. I think we can execute it. I say yes, Ruth one and it'll show us the table and stops. But we don't want it to stop. What we want to do is ask another question. The not the next question will be more help. Help. Okay. And this is going to be input. And we are going to I'm going to copy that so I don't need to write everything. So we're going to say there you go. Do you need more help? Yes or no. And then we're going to add the lower end strip in case they write yes or no in a weird way. We're not yet accounting for something else other than yes and no. We will do it on byte six because we're going to reduce the text or how to the way we create this. This is a little bit manual now. Um, and then here we need another if statement that will say if more help is equal again, comparison equal, yes. Then what we're going to do, continue. Continue what? Where if they say yes, we want them to be able to get to see this part. So we need to do a while true here, right? While true. And then we need to indent everything one way. And for now, we're going to just do else, hoping that they write no. We will fix that later. And then we're going to do print and break. There. So, okay, cool. Let's test it. Yes, Ruth, three. It's not asking me the question though. Mm -hmm. Moments later. One, exactly, yeah. So I haven't defined what happens for four yet. I just have defined for one. So if you write need an alt and one, won't work. But if you write one, there's the one we define. Ask you, would you like to have more help? Yes. Then ask you again, cool. So now what we need to do is to do this for every single table in the database. So on byte six, I will show you how to loop so you don't have to write it manually, but I think it's a good exercise to do it manually at least once, anyhow. So I'm gonna copy that <laughs> because I don't wanna write it from scratch everything. But basically, you just continue doing the if statements, right? For two, for the... Ooh. Okay, driver's license twice. No, thank you. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And you put in the different tables, parcel, income, blah, blah, blah. And then stop and run. <laughs> yes, Ruth, uh, one... Beautiful, yes. Eight. Beautiful, yeah. So it works. No. And then finish. Cool. Perfect. So now you know how it works. Okay, for byte six, we're going to learn how to loop. You're going to loop all the time. All the time. Loop is a bit slow. So I read everywhere that you shouldn't abuse it. But we, you should definitely learn how to do it. Matplotlib, you can do a lot of looping. If your data is not too big, it doesn't do anything. Um, so we're definitely going to learn how to loop. This is super small data, so we're going to loop everything so we learn it. Okay? So I will see you again on byte six. Let me know. Give me the feedback on the comments. Are you enjoying it? Is it going too fast? Should I talk more about a specific topic? I want to know, so make sure you tell me, and I'll see you again on bite six.